I wanted to get a solar panel system installed in my RV, so I began researching panels and charge controllers, inverters, and batteries, and after watching a lot of installation videos and reviews, I realized that though it was doable, it was a pretty technical job, and that there were some major pros and cons to installing a system on my RV's roof versus simply buying a solar generator and portable solar panels that I could plug into my RV just like with 30 amp shore power. For example, some of the pros would be I would have more options in case of shade or bad parking spots. If I had a roof mounted system, I'd have to be very careful about where I parked my RV. It can't be in the shade. It needs to be facing south, which is just not possible in some campgrounds. Also, in my case, I have an RV shed that I park the RV in. But with portable solar panels and a solar generator, I can have options. I even bought 100 feet of extension cables to give me even more access to the sunniest parts of the lawn with my solar panel. Another pro is that a solar generator is more versatile. These systems are a lot of money either way you look at it, so I like the idea of not being limited to using it just with my RV. I can also use my solar generator like I would a gas or propane generator during an emergency at home. And it's way better than a gas generator, in my opinion, in that it is totally silent. I personally also have a transfer switch at my house, so I can actually power my house systems with it as well. It's easier to maintain since you don't need to climb on the roof to clean the solar panel. Panels. It's easier to install since there is no real installation. Another pro I think is that it's scalable. If you buy a good enough generator, I have the Blue Eddy AC300, you can add to it as you go and get a lot more out of it. For instance, you can add up to 2400 watts of solar input, which is a huge amount. So instead of three of these 200 watt panels that I bought, I could be using 12 200 watt panels. With the Blue Eddy, you can also scale up the batteries to four 3072 watt hour batteries for a total of 12,288 watt hours. Also, if you have two AC300 units and two batteries, you can get an adapter to power 240 volt appliances. I ended up deciding on a solar generator for these reasons, and in this video, I'll go over why I chose the one I did. I'll also go over all the tests I did so that you can get a real world idea of what appliances it will power on your RV, how long it will power those appliances, as well as how quickly it can charge in various conditions. I'll also link to the two or three runner-up solar systems that can be used with RVs like the EcoFlow Delta Max and the Jackery 2000 Pro, as well as to everything you would need to buy with that system in the description. First, the basics. A solar generator is basically the same thing as any other solar power system, but it's in a portable package. For example, the Jackery 2000 Pro is basically a big battery pack with a charge controller, inverter, and all the plugs for inputs and outputs built in. The one that I bought, the Blue Eddy AC300, is a little bit different since it has its battery battery pack, the B300 units, as separate units from the inverter. Most of these solar generators will work with any kind of solar panels that you can buy, but they often come with the manufacturer's own brand of solar panels that are also portable, and unlike static solar panels, they're usually made of materials that are really hard to break. The main reasons I went with the Blue Eddy AC300 over the EcoFlow Delta Max or the Jackery 2000 are as follows. Number one, the solar panel input limit. As I mentioned, the AC300 can handle up to 2400 watts of solar panels, so I could use it to control a huge grid of solar panels if I wanted to, where with the other two, you can only do about half that much. Number two, the battery chemistry and longevity. The AC300 uses lithium ion phosphate batteries and is rated for 3500 charge and recharge charge cycles to 80%, which means that with regular usage, it will last me many more years than the other two would have. The AC300 was the only one to have a dedicated 30 amp plug right on the unit for my RV. The others can also be used with 30 amps, but they do need an adapter. I also like that the battery could be charged independently. That is, you can plug a solar panel just directly up to the battery, although only up to 200 watts, if I understand that correctly. The separate batteries also have their own DC input, so you can charge things directly from the battery as well. Finally, the battery on the AC300 was just bigger at 3,072 watt hours, so that's about one third more runtime than with the others. Moving on to the tests, I went through my RV and took note of how many watts each system used using the screen on the AC300, which displays how much power is going in and out of the system, and there was no appliance or system in the RV that the AC300 could not run, including my 13,500 BTU air conditioner. I also used my three Blue Eddy 200 watt solar panels to test how quickly they charged the battery. First, I made a list of everything my wife and I would want to use on a camping trip, which included running our 
DC refrigerator all day, charging two phones and two laptops from completely dead to 100% once a day, lights, which in our case are LED in the camper and don't use that much power, a coffee maker for 15 minutes a day, a microwave for 15 minutes a day, and two showers. Before we get to the results though, we need to talk about solar panels and how quickly they charge the battery when using solar power only. What I found is that with clear skies at noon in June, the best I could get out of each solar panel was around 150 watts each, but more commonly it was around 125 watts each. After reading reviews from other manufacturers of solar panels, it seems that this is normal to see these kinds of discrepancies between the rated wattage and the actual wattage you get. I did also test it with and without my 75 feet of extension cords in case that was it, but that only accounted for a minimal loss of about 10 watts. This means that the highest number I saw during the tests with all three of my 200 watt solar panels connected was about 450 watts total, which would have been with clear skies. But I had extremely cloudy conditions every day I tested it, and I only averaged about 250 to 300 watts an hour. I kept the panels out about seven and a half hours each time, so like 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Even in those cloudy conditions, I was able to bring in 2200 watts a day on average, which would have been enough to fully charge the Jackery 2000 Pro or the EcoFlow Delta, but because the Blue Eddy's battery is bigger, it was only about 70% charged. In any case, 2200 watts a day is what I'll be basing the following calculations on, even though I think I could bring in 3000 to 3400 watts a day if the skies were clear. And of course, I could add more solar panels for much more than that if I wanted. So let's look at a few scenarios based on these tests. The pleasant surprise to me was that my wife and I could power all the things we wanted to power indefinitely with a daily surplus of around 3,100 watt hours. That is, if we could bring in 2,100 watts of solar per day. In other words, if we chose to boondock forever, we could never run out of power as long as we had moderately good sun. If we did not want to use our solar panels or if it was raining or something, we could go one and a half days on one charge based on those calculations or three days if we had two batteries. Now the air conditioning unit was a bit confusing. I ran ours in the tests and I guess because it was in the shade, the compressor didn't have to work too hard. So it was only drawing around 400 watts, which is pretty low. We could easily run it seven hours on one battery in that case, but I didn't use that number. Instead, I did internet research for a typical RV AC unit draw on a hot day and came up with an average of 1300 watts. If we were averaging a conservative 2100 watts of solar a day and we ran the AC only during the hottest parts of the day, let's say for two hours a day, then we could boondock for 24 hours on one battery or two days on two batteries. Not bad, but in that scenario, we would have a dead battery at the end of it. Whereas if we didn't run the AC, we would always have a full battery at the end of the day. My personal opinion is that the main bottleneck is the amount of solar panels. If I had to do it all over again, I would have bought four Blue Eddy 350 watt solar panels instead of 200 watt panels so I could get much closer to being totally independent even while using the AC. I couldn't be happier with my AC 300 and I'm glad I bought the two battery system instead of the one battery system, but it's probably overkill for most situations. I would spend the extra money on solar panels instead of the extra battery if I were you. That's where you get the most value in a boondocking situation in my opinion. Links in the description to everything I mentioned in an organized way and thanks for watching.